Welcome to Tony Unleashed, the podcast where we unleash the truth about all things pets. Our research and anecdotal evidence matched with pet expert interviews will help you help your pet thrive. We are here to answer questions, divulge information, and spread awareness about what's really going on in the world of pets. I am your co-host, Emily Taylor, pet nutrition enthusiast. And I'm Tony Shalaski, owner of Healthy Pet Products with three locations in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and recently expanded to Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome to the show. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Tony Unleashed the Podcast. September is Flea and Tick Month. Yep, that's our focus. Not a happy topic, but we have to talk about it. And what we're going to talk about is holistic, which is basically chemical-free flea flea and tick prevention options that we carry as well as talk about the mainstream (laughs) options. I got to wing this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're talking about mainstream options that are commonly used and why they can be dangerous. You know, I think the, the biggest controversy of flea and tick is that there's a very vet prescribed side to it and then there's a very holistic side to it but you know fleas and ticks can cause pretty serious adverse you know issues that need to be addressed and regardless if you have any relevant experience or situations that you feel like are worth sharing um, with our listeners and so we can talk about what happened maybe how it benefited you maybe you know some side effects that you experienced um, that's what we're here for all of our episodes including this one are open for discussion we want to hear from our listeners we want to hear about their experience we want to answer any further questions this is think of it as a Socratic seminar not a Not anything that you have to absolutely do or not do. So basically, we're just going to talk about both sides of the coin, which we typically always do. Mm -hmm. We are not here to shove information or ideas. We are just trying to give you both sides of things because Mm -hmm. we know you as pet parents are being bombarded from traditional veterinary methods and alternative methods. So we're here to try to bring those two worlds together and give you the information to help you decide what makes sense to you and what you feel is best for your pet, your life, your household, your kids, your whatever. And to piggyback off that really quickly, I feel like that is a great synopsis of our overall goal and and um, purpose of being here is that, you know, for so long, we are told to just listen to what one vet says, follow that protocol and those guidelines. But we're here to just introduce the idea of, you know, second, third opinions, research, expl- like getting more information, getting more details, making a more, you know, educated approach or decision for your dogs that works best for you. And, and asking family. questions. And asking questions. Yeah. Question everything. Yep. Um, yep. So... There's a lot of information out there. So we're going to start with three top selling flea and tick products that are on the market. And these are chemical based. The brand NexGuard. Part of the first ingredient is naphthalene. And I'll spell that for you guys. N-A-P-H-T-H-A-L-E-N-E, which is normally found in coal tar and is not good to inhale has potential to have very negative side effects. So basically what NexGuard is doing is fighting off the chloride ions from the insect and not actually replacing anything in the body. However, it also has a lot of fluorine in the structure and that is what causes all the potential side effects. Because if one of those fluorine structures were to pop off, then that small body would be flushed with fluoride. (laughs) So in a future episode, we're having Emily Claire's sister on who is a... She's getting her uh, PhD right now in chemistry. Okay. Yeah. So we will dive into this deeper, but we're keeping it basic right now. Mm -hmm. The next product we're going to talk about is Brevecto, B-R-A-V-E-C-T-O. And that contains Floralaner, which is a member of the isozazoline class. This class has been associated with neurological adverse reactions, including tremors, ataxia, seizures. The seizures have been reported in dogs receiving 
isozaline class drugs, even in dogs without a history of seizures. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures of neurological disorders. Neurologic adverse reactions have been reported in cats, even in cats without a history of neurological disorders. Use with caution in cats with a history of neurological disorders. This is all verbatim coming off of the label. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The small print at uh, the bottom of the website. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Third one, and we're only touching on three right now. There are many chemical flea and trick tick treatments on the market. The last one's frontline that we're going to talk about today. And the main ingredient in in that is Fipronil, which is a suspected human carcinogen, an endocrine disruptor. It can also be toxic to the nervous system, particularly if digested. Signs of a negative reaction include headache, dizziness, and seizures. Less serious reactions are nausea, vomiting, weakness, which may be signs your body is responding to the toxicity level. Children are particularly susceptible because they are more likely to pet the dog and put their hands in their mouths, hello, hence ingesting Mm -hmm. it, or play with the dog toys in dog and be in dog areas. Yeah. So frontline is one of the ones that is topical and not ingested, but children can easily ingest it. Yeah. And I don't care what they say after three days or however many hours it's safe to pet your dog. Bullshit. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially young children. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this is just really information that is not hidden. Uh, We got this off websites. We did simple Google searches of just like core ingredients of these products. So it's not a secret being kept from anyone um, by any means. It's obviously a go-to for most vets. It's a go-to for most people. But we do hope that this sparks some some more in-depth research from your pet parents who are deciding the best route for the animals. And if you do that or if anyone does that, then I think we've succeeded here as um, part of our goal and part of our reach. But I think what it's really important to talk about because this topic can be so controversial is that there is a need and there is a time and a place for these options. If you live in an area that is maybe like Georgia or Mississippi, where heartworm is very, very common and prevalent. And when that season comes, if giving your prescribing your dog or giving your dog next guard Brevecto is the best thing that you can do um, as a pet parent to prevent them from any of these like limes or heartworm, then, you know, that's where this will help. And that and that in that situation, that's where the risks may outweigh the alternatives. A lot of rescues use these. Um, they're a great way to, you know, attack the problem quickly and to have longer term effects. But, you know, if you're in a situation where you can kind of control your environment a little bit better, manage your pet a little bit closer, you know, there are some safer options out there for you that are safe for children, safe for humans, um, safe for indoors, and that aren't gonna are not gonna have any of these neurotoxic side effects at all really. And with that being said, I would really like to share with you some information and suggestions from Dr. Judy Morgan. Um, She talks a lot about her protocol on her website and via her emails when when it comes to specific flea and tick prevention protocol. I will keep it brief, but I think it's important to mention these because it's, you know, coming from a veterinarian, a veterinarian on a different side of things. So, Kind of what I touched on earlier, that fleas and ticks are not always active in all parts of the world on a year-round basis. While fleas and ticks should be prevented in endemic areas, use of harmful pesticides, chemicals for our pets can have deadly consequences. She recommends to avoid chemical flea and tick preventatives as they are particularly toxic. Uh, These chemicals should never be used on pets that are sick or immune compromised. But every effort should be made to remove parasites from pets that are ill. Most topical chemical preventatives do not repel fleas and ticks. So if you are not seeing any activity, your pet may not have exposure and may not need preventatives. Healthy natural alternatives are available to keep your pet parasite free. AKA thinking about that five pound chihuahua that does not go out on hikes. You know, you live in the city, probably does not need a a dose of Nexgard or Prevecto or Frontline. You can probably manage that really easily. Short-haired little dogs um, that are pretty much staying indoors. We do not need to like give them all of these chemicals. Also, you know, indoor cats, you know, depending on your, where you live and how, where your dogs are going, but a lot of indoor cats also don't need a ton of chemicals. But you know what, uh, 
what they hear on the flip side of that, pet parents hear, well, if you have other pets yeah, yeah, yeah. that are going outside, right. those pets are carrying them inside. Well, and if you have a five pound Yorkie Chihuahua and an indoor cat, and you're not going on hikes in the wilderness and you don't have long grass or deer in your backyard, you're probably going to be okay. And your animal's going to be a lot healthier. She also talks about no matter which prevention method you choose, remember that pets can still succumb to disease spread by these parasites, even with the use of chemical chemical preventatives. Um, this one's huge. I think a lot of people don't realize that even though they're on some of these things, their dog can still get heartworm. Their dog can still get Lyme's disease. And she said she talks about how many patients become ill, even though they've had monthly chemicals applied, either topically or orally, and that most of the oral and topical products do not repel fleas and ticks. They only kill them once they attach the dog or cat. So there's no guarantees that your pets will remain free of pest-borne diseases, no matter what you use. And then the last thing she really talks about that I thought was important was keeping your pet free from Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, ehrlichiosis, tapeworm, and other diseases does not mean you have to resort to chemical prevention. Common sense, along with the use of natural preventatives, will keep your pets healthier in the long run by avoiding the use of chemicals. Our environment and the health of our planet for future generations will greatly improve. Yeah, and that, I mean, that can be a whole topic on pharmaceuticals and that <laughs> kind of umbrella of things and why we push chemicals and stuff like this. But, um, and people are terrified of Lyme disease. Yeah. And, I think I blow people's minds away, customers in particular, when I say Lyme disease is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. I've had two dogs with full-blown Lyme disease and you you don't even know they have it sometimes. Mm -hmm. So their bodies truly know how to, if they are infected with it, rid the body of it, mm -hmm. especially with support right. through diet and exercise, through diet and supplemental care. But it is absolutely not a death sentence. We have been fed fear so that we do want to use these chemicals. Yeah. 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 So as far as some of the natural ways to prevent fleas and ticks from bar bombarding your home and your pets... We have tons of them at the store, and a lot of our products that we sell use these ingredients. Cedar oil, which acts as a natural insecticide. Peppermint oil, which will affect the nervous system of fleas and ticks, but not your pets. Lemongrass oil, which works particularly well against fleas, just as a natural repellent. Coconut oil, which kills and repels fleas due to the ingredient lauric acid. This can be used internally and externally. Garlic, don't feed garlic to your cats. This is just for dogs. But a small amount of fresh garlic every day is not threatening for your life threatening for your dog, like you all, like many people think. It can actually be good for the immune system and help repel fleas. So it will allow them to emit an odor that repels. And we don't smell that odor but trust me, it's there. And as far as the rule of thumb for how much garlic to feed, no more than a half of a clove per 20 pounds of body weight. And remember, dogs only, no cats. We also have a product that just uses ultrasonic pulses to prevent fleas and ticks from your dogs or can even be used for humans. This is my one of my favorite things ever. Um, and it's just a little tag that they wear on their collar. And with that being said, when you resort to natural products for flea and tick pre prevention, it is best that you use a modality approach. In other words, you've got to use more than one thing. I hate to say it, but you, you got to do it. You can do a year-long internal supplement followed by peppermint oil or a natural collar during the warmer months, and then also add a spray for hiking, camping, etc. All the products we have can be used to get together and are safe for dogs, puppies, children, and adults. That's what's the main thing to remember here. And even the natural products can be used with chemical products. There's yeah. no contraindications between them at all. And I hate to say it, but yeah, when you go natural, you do have to do a multi-layered approach. I mean, even, you know, a couple things 
are keeping your grass really short uh, year round, Um, keeping your dog's hair short, especially if you have some of those like curly hair dogs that mat easier. That's a really great spot for fleas to kind of bury. And uh, also using, you know, brushing your dog out, feeling your dog after every run, Um, using a bandana with a flea and tick, a natural flea and tick spray on it and wrapping them around their neck when they're going on hikes, wiping your dog down after a hike or going outside in the yard, treating your yard with, you know, some of these natural things as well. Like there's cedar side granules and sprays that you can treat your yard with. And being just aware of where you live, you know, the environment that you're in, you know, look up on online on the um, levels and numbers and percentages of heartworm, Lyme disease prevalent in your area. Just all of those, all of those things. It's a little bit more work, but it's going to, you know, make your dog happier, healthier, keep your kids safe, keep you safe. And another good tip after being out, especially if you're hiking, is spread a white sheet on the floor, grab your flea and tick comb and just, it would also be a good idea to have a little mug full of alcohol or something in case you do find a tick or a flea. And as you're combing through, you're, you're just, you're just ready to, and I'm, I know this sounds crazy probably to a lot of people, but you know, it's a personal choice that, uh, that we all have to make. Mm -hmm. And I am choosing flea and tick, fleas and ticks and occasionally finding them on my dogs all day long over using chemicals on them. Well, and talk about, and I didn't add this in our outline, but talk about um, briefly the Lime Blaster option, one. And then um, if you can, the different um, products out there to help remove ticks easier. So we have a product called Lime Blaster so that when your dog is bitten by a tick and you pull it off correctly, which I'm going to talk about. But once you pull the tick off, Lime Blaster is an herbal tincture and you put a drop on the bite and it literally pulls the toxins that are that are closer to the surface. It pulls the toxins out of the dog's body. So basically what happens is the tick literally like will vomit as it releases. So that pulls some of those toxins out. And I think another really important point to make is if they're attached less than 24 hours, yeah. the likelihood of any disease transmission is zero. Yeah. Um, but it's also very important to pull a tick with the proper tool. Mm-hmm. So we don't recommend your fingers and we don't recommend tweezers. tweezers because what it's doing is squeezing the tick and that is making the tick vomit majorly into your dog's body or cat's body. And that's the last thing you want. My favorite tool is the tick key. And you literally just put ticky over the, it has a little hole in it. You put it over the tick and give it a little twist and you literally can hear it pop. It makes the tick release and you're done. And it it holds it right on the thing and bam, you just throw it in some alcohol or throw it in the toilet or whatever. Another product is the tick twister. And that also, it's like this little L-shaped yeah. thing that you slide onto the tick and you twist it and it releases. Um, that's good. I and think- these are cheap tools. Oh, super cheap. Yeah. Super cheap. They're just good to have like multiple in your home. Because yes. And in one in your car, one in your bathroom. The tick key has a keychain thing on it. Yeah. I have I have it on my keychain. I have one upstairs and one bit downstairs in the house, both in the bathroom. So I know where they're at. Yeah. And another, it's not a prevention, but it's a killer. It's diatomaceous earth. earth. Yeah. So that too. And you have to, um, a lot of people will recognize diatomaceous earth that have pools, but you have to use diatomaceous earth that is food grade. And that can go right on topically Mm -hmm. on their, um, that goes on your carpet that goes right on, you know, you kind of pull back the hair you sprinkle it on and it's just really, it's silica and it's just really small pieces of the earth that are really sharp under a microscope. So you really don't want to breathe it in because it can hurt your um, respiratory system because it is so sharp. 
And what it does is, is it's so small and it just, it stabs and kills, Mm -hmm. you know, anything on top. inside out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's great to use as an internal detoxifier too, for any internal worms or anything as well. I drink it. I give it to my dogs all the time. And it's also great for deodorizer. You know, if you do have a house full of dogs uh, or cats and you know, I like sprinkle it on the carpets every like once a month, just, you know, they don't know what they're, we have in the house with all these animals and backyard and stuff and it deodorizes and it's freaking great. <laughs> I love diatomaceous sir, the, quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Are we, that was pretty quick, brief to the point. I think that was a really good starting point for this topic. Yeah. Because there's a lot more that we can get into of the chemicals and the different options out there. You know, the question is how, how technical do our listeners want us to get? That's true. So give so- us, let us know. Do you want us? Was this enough? Do you want more? Do you want more? Uh, it- Nitty gritty, scientific. And if detailed. we get more scientific, we have to pull in Emily Claire's sister. Yeah. 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 Because I don't. And honestly, even if this just gets, gets you thinking, yeah. Or gets you to use chemicals a little bit less, right. And start to investigate the natural, right. Then I feel like. We've accomplished something. I mean, you think about it too. You give some of these oral flea and tick preventatives say that they last for 12 weeks. Yeah. Can you like you're putting one little thing in your dog's body that is lingering in its body for minimum 12 weeks. Nothing natural does that. How does it work for 12 weeks? Well, and how can this product that attacks the central nervous system of a flea and tick to kill it? Not how can that not affect the central nervous system? system? Of your pet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And a lot of times, you know, it's not going to be recorded. You know, you get, you pop one of those things into your dog's system and they have horrible diarrhea, lethargy, dizziness, uh, seizures, and it's not going to, and you you go to the vet, it's not going to track as a side effect of the oral prescription. They have tons of paperwork they have to do to report adverse reactions. Yeah. And it's not, it's. And they don't have time. No. Mm-mm. They Especially don't have you're time. probably going to an emergency vet. They don't have time. No. They definitely don't have time. God, no. it takes a month to get into a regular vet. Yeah. Yeah. They're just going to treat it and send you on your way. Yeah. And tell you it wasn't. It wasn't. Yep. Wasn't that. Yep. So. Give us your feedback, please. We please. really want to know. What is it? What is, I still don't know our show. Customer service at healthypetproducts.net or info at tonyunleashed.com. Dot com. That's it. That's- or we have in- Tony Unleashed on Instagram. Yep. Send us a message there. Yep. We have Tony Unleashed on Facebook. Send us a message there. Healthy Pet Products has a website. Send us a freaking message there. Yep. It's all the same one person. <laughs> Pretty much is that lucky girl. It's a lucky girl. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, give her a shout out. <laughs> From small town, western Pennsylvania. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry for the somber somber topic, but it is a topic that we have to talk about and yep. we're going to talk about again. So that's all for now. And, you know, check out, come see us at Healthy Pet Products yeah. to see what, what, natural flea and tick preventative works best for you, your lifestyle, your dog, because dogs range from size two pounds to 150 pounds. And there's something there for everyone on the natural side of things. Yep. And uh, for sure, we'll, we'll talk you through it. We will. Yeah. All right. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.